If we had to try and predict, and it's never easy doing this whatsoever, but if you had to try and predict who's going to get a performance bonus on this card, one of these two guys definitely could. We have Hawaii's Punaheli Soriano taking on Serbia's Disco Todorovic. And Matt, I'm really looking forward to this fight. I mean, you get the Southpaw and Puna Soriano coming out of Extreme Couture. Good buddies with Dan Ige. Ray Seifo in his corner most of the time. He throws absolute bombs with his left hand. This is a guy that can put you out at any point of the fight. And with his opponent, Disco Todorovic, this is a guy that just moves so quick from point A to point B in straight lines. You go back and watch his fight with Serbia Battle Championship uh, or Challenge. Um, the fight against Michelle Pereira. And he just clocks him. He just moves from A to B, pushes him up against the cage, knocks him out, fights over. Then he comes in on Contender Series, fights the Canadian, Teddy Ash, the former Unified champ. And he just wears on him. And it's one of those fights where you always look at wrestling, you talk about grappling, and it's all about the pummels. And who's going to win position for underhook? And for Todorovic, what he does is he just goes underhooks and then he moves position. Then he backs off, lands a couple shots, and he's back in. And he's grinding his head against yours. And he's just making it a gritty fight in that one. The The first round, that's pretty much the whole first round. It's just Disco pushing a pace, pushing Ash up against the cage. The second round, Teddy Ash lands a couple of clean shots. Disco hits him, gross cut under uh, Ash's eye. And then Disco does the same thing. Pushes him up against the cage, back and forth. Third round's more of the same. One judge had it 30-27. Two of them had it 29-28. Dishko gets a contract. I was a little surprised. Both of these guys main evented on Contender Series. Punaheli a little bit uh, more recently back, uh, you know, in 2018 than Dishko. Or rather, Dishko was a little bit earlier than Punaheli or more recent. And then if you look at the fight that Dishko had in his UFC debut, had a lot of time off between the two. He took on Michigan's Taquan Townsend. And say what you want about Daquan Townsend's UFC run. If anything, he was a sucker for punishment. And in that one, Disco hit him with some absolute shots, some moon shots. I mean, he was like, I don't know, Jose Canseco in the 90s, just ramming it up the fifth deck <laughs> at the Sky Dome. You saw it would not Toronto. appreciate that. Comment. No, but Disco put on a great performance. And then when the striking didn't work, he took down uh, Daquan Townsend. He got on top of him, hammered away, got the win. For Punaheli Soriano, picked up a win over Jamie Pickett on Contender Series. It was weird because he was landing power shots, and that's kind of his thing. He moves from point A to point B, but he kind of lunges with his power shots. He's fighting out of southpaw. He's got a wicked um, hook, and that's one of those things. He throws a lot of hooks. It's like Vanderlei Silva all day. And then when the power bar starts to deplete, he reverts back to his wrestling. And he has a very good wrestling background. Division Three All-American at Wartburg. And I had to really pound that one into my brain to remember it. But in the fight against Jamie Pickett, when it doesn't work, he just wrestles. In the third round, he wrestled, stayed on top, and that was pretty much the fight, and he got the win there. And in his UFC debut, he fought, <laughs> and this is a tricky one, Poland's forever prospect, Oscar Piotta, and he looked amazing in that fight. He really did. Now, okay, you did a great job breaking down pretty much every round of both guys' career. So I'm just going to say... Dusko Todorovic, his game, he really simplified it. And I really like what he does. Just let me say this one thing first. He looks like an outstretched uh, Dustin Poirier. Just a little bit. As Craig shows off the eyesight of Stevie Wonder. So Dusko Todorovic, he likes to get his opponent up against the cage. And he forces you to make one of two decisions. You're either going to block your head and he's going to have just exposed hips to go for takedown attempts at. Or you are going to block your body and you are going to try to invite some of those grappling exchanges. Where if he is getting the takedown, he has really good ground and pound from top position. He won't commit to the ground as much as he'll try to use more of a stack guard. And really use that power and throw down on his opponent. For Soriano, the cardio issues are just numerous, and fighting a guy like Todorovic, who is going to bring such an elevated pace, not only with his striking, but with his wrestling game as well, it does, it brings up a lot of concerns, and Soriano, he needs space to land those big shots, he does have really good overhands from left and right, he doesn't just rely on the overhand left, but... He does need space to connect in a lot of those shots. And for Dusko Todorovic, when you were describing his style, really Cain Velasquez is a decent cop. Now, he doesn't have the wrestling credentials of Velasquez, but it's that dirty boxing, that grit and grime, kind of embrace the grind style that Todorovic brings. Now, Todorovic, I would say, much more of a striker than Velasquez was, where Velasquez sort of, he was more uh, wrestling heavy, Todorovic more striking heavy. But Todorovic, I really like how Dusko incorporates the wrestling into his striking game. He's always keeping his opponent thinking. And when he is able to back them up against the cage, 
your choices are, okay, am I going to either absorb punishment to my head or get taken down and then absorb punishment to my head? I just like the overall game of Todorovic, and you can look, yes, his win in the UFC was over to Quan Townsend. Not the most impressive win, but just look how he was able to finish Townsend. He dominates him for really, you can't find a 10 second period of that fight where you would judge it for Townsend. So I just really like the overall game of Todorovic. I think he's a pretty high ceiling in this division too, just because he is able to do a little bit of everything. And no matter where the fight takes place, he's going to find success. Soriano is going to invite a very fun fight out of him. This will be an exciting fight for as long as it lasts, but I do like Todorovic. And for Soriano, I mean, you look at everybody that he trains with at Extreme Couture. If it's Dan Ige, they do kind of a similar thing to a bit of an extent. Dan Ige, definitely more of a wrestler from Doesn't you know from the start of the fight to the end of the fight. But Justin Jeans, another guy. You know how good his wrestling is, so what does he do? He throws absolute bombs with his hands. You look at Punaheli Soriano, a little bit of a comparison there. Again, with Disco Todorovic, nine of his ten wins are by finish. He has six of them by knockout, three of them by submission. And if you have a look, MMA Form Guide has him listed as a black belt in Taekwondo and a black belt in Jiu-Jitsu. We don't see a lot of uh, the Jiu-Jitsu from him. But the one thing that I want to point out, neither one of these guys is very good at kicking. I've seen Punaheli Soriano in his fights throw wild kicks. Disco Todorovic throws even more wild kicks. And it's one of those things where, I don't know if it's a confidence thing, but if his hands are working, he'll just decide, well, I can kick your head with my left foot on the ground, or my right foot on the ground. So I'll just throw my left foot as high as I can just to see that I can still do it. And it's one of those things that he's definitely going to get caught doing it at some point in his career. He takes a lot of chances, and that's one of those things that worries me. With Punaheli Soriano... It's, it's a fight where, and we talked about this one earlier on, Jorgen DeCastro when he fought Justin Taffa. You look at Justin Taffa and he's cutting in and Jorgen DeCastro clips him and knocks him out cold. Punaheli Soriano, if he's going to win, I could see that happening in this fight. The other thing that I worry about, you talked about it. Disco Todorovic has decent wrestling, but it's more the overall grappling game that he brings in. With Punaheli Soriano, it's basically position and lay and pray if he's going to wrestle. It's when he's tired... Well, I'm a wrestler. I can still wrestle. So that's kind of what he does versus the striking that you see in the first round and a little bit into the second round. But we did see it in the fight against Oscar Piata. He did start to tire in that one. You could just see it that he was more and more labored as it went on. In terms of the odds here, Disco Todorovic, uh, minus 150 to a minus 160 favorite. He's still the favorite. That line's moved a little bit. Uh, Soriano, plus 130, plus 145, thereabouts. If we look over on Topology, 989 total votes, 78% picking Disco Todorovic to win, 73% have him to win by knockout. These are all tricky because, again, both guys undefeated. So, as they say, somebody's O has to go. And I think the O of Punaheli Soriano is going to go. Again, I like Disco against sort of, not the elite at 185 yet, but I see that being his trajectory. I don't see him being like a Kevin Holland who's all of a sudden going to be in the top three next week but his progress I think is going to be really impressive throughout his UFC tenure I like him in this fight I'm going to pick Disco I'll even say by finish Matt I have Disco Todorovic in this fight as well again as far as gas tanks are concerned I actually like the test of Teddy Ash a lot more than I like the test that Soriano had in contender series against Jamie Pickett I mean that's not to say that Jamie Pickett of late wasn't all that great, but you look at the guys that Punaheli Soriano's face too. Jonathan Petty, well, he fought uh, Jamie Pickett. Didn't go his way whatsoever. And then you look at the fight uh, that Jamie Pickett has had since. It, just not really a good comparison. For Disco Todorovic, the last three fights, the Pareda knockout, the win over Teddy Ash, who, again, had a lot of quality opponents in Canada with Unified, and then the win over Daquan Townsend. I like that trajectory. I'm in agreement with you. We're both going with Disco Todorovic to bring the win back to Serbia. Overall, a great card, Matt. And this one should really deliver. Looking forward to Holloway and Cater coming up later on in the night. So keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's get into 